Hey everyone, it's uh, Saturday afternoon. I hope you are making the most of the time that we're in. I am enjoying a cup of coffee right now after going for a three mile walk with my amazing wife. We had a great time uh, just chatting, walking, getting outside, breathing some fresh air. And uh, tomorrow morning, I hope you'll join us for church. Obviously, we're not gathering physically at our building. Uh, I recorded a message yesterday afternoon for you, and we have some other stuff, and we'll uh, release it tomorrow morning on YouTube. We'll send out the link email. We'll send out the link on our Facebook page. Uh, maybe you'll get a text as well. And even though we can't physically gather, I hope you will still consider setting aside Sunday morning as a time to devote uh, some time to the Lord, to worship, to pray, and uh, know that we are all doing this. We are all together in the Spirit. Uh, I hope you'll watch the message. I hope you'll uh, uh, watch whatever else that we produce. I hope that you'll uh, reach out, maybe call or text uh, someone else in the church just to say hi, just to maybe uh, bless them with a prayer, uh, ask them if they have any needs. You know, again, this is uh, so critical that we press into the Lord and that we stay connected uh, it's, you know, it seems likely that we have a few hard things to uh, walk through, and uh, we certainly are going to need the Lord and need one another uh, in these days ahead, but I am completely 100% confident that God has got this, that God is going to lead and guide us, that we can ask Him to intervene to limit any harm, and that we can rely on Him, and I have no doubt that he will bring some really amazingly good things out of this, even though uh, the thing that we're going through itself is not so good. Anyways, we love you guys. I wanted to, uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing during this time is uh, I'm kind of doing a personal devotion, and uh, I've just been on my heart to, to look at uh, some of the sermons of Jesus. They're oftentimes called the discourses of Jesus. There's several um, longer uh, teachings or sermons that are recorded. A lot of them are in Matthew, but some of the other Gospels have them as well. And so I thought maybe I would just share it with you. So if you're interested, you can watch along. I'll release you know a little bit every day. Uh, the first one I want to look at actually is a Sermon on the Mount, probably one of the most famous sermons of Jesus. And so we'll kind of kick that off and uh, maybe just share a few things. Um, and it's recorded in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. And this morning, I'll just cover, this afternoon, I'll just cover a couple of the first uh, 12 verses, which are known as the Beatitudes. All right. And so, uh, just to give you some context, uh, probably the most succinct um, summary of the teaching of Jesus, and it's recorded in many of the Gospels, is this. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, or repent, for the kingdom of heaven is is at hand. And of course that means to, you know, repent in the light of the fact that God's kingdom is now coming. And repent uh, means to turn, it means to change your thinking, it means to change your loyalty, it means to make a change in response to something. And so Jesus is announcing that the kingdom of God is now at hand, meaning that this promised kingdom uh, that had been announced many times through the prophets and the law and the writings that it was now at hand, that with the arrival of Jesus, God was bringing his long-awaited kingdom to our world. And so repent means to make a change in response to this announcement. And of course, the miracles and the healings uh, that Jesus performed were signs that his announcement was indeed true, that the kingdom uh, that had been announced before was now beginning to break into our world. And that and it's a kingdom of righteousness. It's a kingdom of healing. And so there were signs and there were healings to, to say, boom, it's here. And Jesus really is uh, who he says that he is. And and this is why Jesus said that when we go into all the world and make the same announcement, the same miracles and healings will accompany us because he is with us. 
Now, the rest of Jesus' teachings had to do with the nature of God's kingdom or what uh, the coming of his kingdom would mean or, or how we should think and act in God's kingdom and what we would see as it unfolded. And of course, one of the most famous sermons is known as the Sermon on the Mount as recorded in Matthew 5 through 7. And so let's just jump right into it. And so uh, it's just 12 verses that we're going to cover this morning. I won't read them all, but the first is it says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And it's kind of interesting how Matthew does this. He says, Jesus sees the crowds, he goes up to the mountain, then it says his disciples came to him. Uh, later on, when you look at the end of this sermon, it says that the crowds were amazed at his teachings. And there had been a lot of debate, like, was Jesus preaching to only his disciples, or was he a, a preaching to the crowds? Because in the beginning, it says the disciples came to him, but by the end, it says the crowds were, were amazed. And and uh, I've always found that interesting. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know exactly what Matthew was getting at with all that. Exactly how it happened was it? Just, did the disciples come first and then the crowds kind of followed? Or I'm not really sure. Um, I think you know one of the things I kind of take away from this, of course, is that of course it says it starts off that Jesus saw the crowds. He has his eye on everyone. His message is for everyone, and those who hear it, especially if they hear it. Um, it's a radical message. It's an amazing message. It's hard not to be amazed when you really hear the things that he's teaching. Um, but it's really the disciples. It's really those who have made a decision to put their faith in Jesus, who are the ones who are most likely to really come close to him and to hear. Okay, <clears throat> so it says he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, and he goes on and he makes a series of statements that begin with blessed are. Blessed are. And of course, blessed means to be happy. It means actually to be blissfully happy. Um, blessed, particularly in the context of Scripture and the teachings of Jesus, is a, it's a good life that comes as a gracious gift from God. So it's not just a happiness in a, in a, in a, in a state of bliss. It's a state of happiness and bliss because of the grace of God extended to you in your life that turns your life into something that is worth being happy and blissful about. All right? To bless actually means to speak good. It means to speak well, to speak good things. So, so when you bless someone, you are speaking good over them. <clears throat> You're speaking good things to come to someone. And so, listen, when God speaks, what he speaks happens. God said, let there be light, and there was light. So when God speaks good things over you, you know those good things are coming. They're available. So when God blesses you, it means to speak well. It means to, to, to graciously uh, extend uh, himself to you that makes you happy, blissful, it makes life full. And uh, and so Jesus is saying, blessed are. And then he goes through and he makes a whole bunch of different statements. Now many think that uh, these Beatitudes are kind of like a code of ethics for Christians. Um, not, it's true only in the sense that um, what Jesus is saying has implications for us. But Jesus is not announcing a code of ethics. He's announcing good news, all right? Remember, his message is repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And so what he starts off this sermon with, it's really an announcement of good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. But it gets even better than that. He's basically, when he goes through, he's saying a few things about who the kingdom is for. And the first thing is the kingdom of God is for the broken, okay? It's, um, it's, it's, it's not, the kingdom of God is not just, it's not for the rich, it's not for the powerful, it's not for the ones who can take it by force. The kingdom of God is for those who don't have their act together, who don't know everything, who have no means to grab it. The kingdom of God is for those who are broken, for those who are weak, and for those who know they are dependent on God's grace. Listen, life is made right when God when God's kingdom comes. 
And the good news is that his kingdom is for the broken. It's not for those who think they can buy it, earn it, grab it, control it. It is for those who by faith believe that God has your back. It is for those who are poor in spirit, and it is for those who mourn. Then he goes on, he says, the kingdom is for those who desire the kingdom for what it truly is. It is for those who love mercy because the kingdom is mercy. It is for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because the kingdom of God is about God's righteousness. It is for those who are pure in heart because God is pure. It is for those who make peace. It is not for the violent. It is not for the hypocrite. It is not for the self-righteous. It is not for the one who embraces a crooked heart. It is not for those who hate God or those who reject his ways. And lastly, it is for those willing to pay the price to see it come. It is for those who are willing to endure rejection and persecution and insults and accusations for telling people about this good news and for living according to its truth. And so that's this first part. It's the it's Jesus announcing that the kingdom of God is now at hand. And that is really good news. Everybody was waiting, anticipating. It had been promised, and Jesus is saying this amazing uh, promised kingdom is beginning to break forth into this world and I have good news for you. It's not for the elite. It's not for, it's not for just the powerful. It's not for those who can command armies. It's not for the tyrants. It's not, it's not for the crooked and hard. It's not, it's not for those who are cruel and harsh uh, and unforgiving. It's, it's not for those who are self-righteous and selfish and all that. The good news is that God's kingdom is for the broken and for the weak and for those who know that they have no other option but to trust in the grace of God. And they, by faith, are willing to believe that God has your back. And it's for those who really want the kingdom for what it truly represents, not for what they think it is or for what they want it to be, for what, what, what it really and honestly really is, which is based on the very nature of the goodness and the love and the kindness and the mercy and the grace of God. And it really is for those who are willing to pay the price. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the fickle. It's not for the ones who are selfishly ambitious. It's not for those who just want to, you know, use the kingdom for some kind of personal benefit, but they don't really, uh, they don't really love it for what it truly is and what it means to others and the selfish, selflessness and the self-sacrifice that are, uh, that, that describe the very nature of the kingdom because that's the very nature of our king and so for those who who so love it who so long for it who recognize that they have no way to be able to grab it earn it buy it get a hold of it except that god graciously extend it to us and they're so willing to pay the price that they're willing to share this good news with others regardless of the cost to, their, to themselves that's who the kingdom is for and that really is good news so celebrate today the good news that the kingdom of god is at hand and it's for you if you're broken you desire it and you don't mind paying the price love you guys uh, i'll see you tomorrow morning uh via youtube and uh, i'll release some more uh, uh this devotion as we go along bless you